Alright, we'll open it up for questions. Guys. We're gonna start with Fat Grant. Hey, how you doing? Uh, thanks for you. I guess, uh, how close did you get and, and do you think you're on track for maybe even opening this year? How close did I get? Uh, I guess we'll never really know, right? Like, it's such a big difference from laying, like what I'm doing is essentially laying the foundation to skating, my new kind of skating technique um, with a new piece of my knee, right? For the um, Laying the foundation and playing in an NHL playoff game is very different. And I'm sure you guys all witnessed it. Um, I mean, mentally, I felt pretty close at times. I'm like, all right, well, I can do this. I can, you know, I can go out there for a few shifts here and there. But I, I think the uh, the best decision was made to just for me to focus on what I was doing throughout the entire playoffs, as hard as it was, and as much as I wanted to be out there. Um, it was ultimately the best decision for my health. And I think long term for this organization as well. Eric, a lot of the drills that we saw you doing and skating the last handful of months, you weren't obviously going at full speed or, or going at 95 pace. Is that a matter of physically you just aren't able to do those movements yet, or is this a matter of doctors telling you it's easier to skate now? Uh, I think it's more about earning the right to progress in what I'm doing. Um, I think when you get in trouble and when I have gotten in trouble throughout this process is when I do something that I'm not necessarily ready for or I haven't earned the the right to progress in those movements and um, you know I have a good really good team of people around me and um, and we're just taking a step by step I'd love to go faster I'd love to go harder I'd love to there are days when I go out there and I'd love to try to go for a max sprint for a puck but I know that's not going to be the best decision from for my health, and you just, like I said, you got to earn the right to, to do those things, and there'll come a day when I when I get to do that, and uh, but we got to do step by step. Ryan Bolden. Coach, you just said that you know the, the frustration of you know coming to that process while watching your team compete in the playoffs you weren't able to earn that trophy. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> it's just, um, just kind of a slow form of torture. I feel like. Uh, and you know it's win or lose you want to be out there with the guys right like even after heartbreaking losses um you want to be in the room with the guys you want to be around the guys you want to be there to support them and just kind of go through all those things with them uh whether it's ups or downs but um at the end of the day i knew it wasn't necessarily my time and and uh, i try to support the, the guys the best i could be around the team which was probably equally as important for the guys as it was for me as well. Um, and for my mental state, just to be around the guys and, and, and around the team. So um, hard, no doubt, but I just kind of kept telling myself that, you know, there'll come a time when you're back in there and your time will come type of thing. Troy and Colleen. Um, a lot of things. I mean, listen, the, the logo that I'm wearing, you know, to to represent that the best way I can. Um, the fan base have always been very supportive for me and, and my journey, no matter the ups and the downs that we've gone through. The 25 guys in that locker room, um, you know, guys that are pushing me and watching the guys grind through an 82-game season plus playoffs. I mean, that's an... You know, it's inspiring in and of itself. You see the challenges they go through on a daily basis. I can relate that to the challenges I go through, uh, the ups and the downs. But I think ultimately, you know, my family, right? Like I got two young kids. They're three and four now. They were two and a half and one and a half when, you know, when we won the cup. And that was the last time they saw me play. My son is now three. And, you know, he last night he slept with his hockey jersey on. He slept with his stick. He slept with his gloves. And it just, like, he... He loves hockey, and whether that's to my fault or not, because he he's exposed to a lot of it, and he comes to practice sometimes. He comes to the games, um, you know, and 
and my daughter's old enough. She's four now, four and a half, and she she kind of knows. I've explained to her, a, you know, a handful of times that, you know, they sometimes ask why I'm not playing, why I'm not out there, and and I say I go to work, but my son will question, well, you're not skating though, you're not playing, so are you really going to work? <laughs> And I've explained to them that I just, you know, I need to get stronger. I need to get healthy. And, and I think that's honestly one of the main motivations for me is to ultimately be able to one day look back at all of this craziness that I went through for, for years. And, you know, you over overcome it and you get through it and you come out on the other side and you're, you're better because of it. And you got a boatload of experience. And, you know, my wife's been through the ringer she's dealing with me the last two years and I haven't been pleasant to deal with some days and, it, and it's a big challenge but you know so she's she's been sort of that rock for me and and uh, you know I just I just can't wait to be back out there and and uh, and then come give my family big hugs after the game It'd be pretty special Colleen and Dickens Uh, I, I think it's that's a good question because it's still something I'm wrestling with and trying to figure out. Um, it's a different, different dynamic, obviously, and and I think at the end of the day, it's hard to sort of you're going through mental gymnastics on your own to get your mind right to just keep going, keep putting one foot in front of the other for your own health and for your own career's sake. And at the same time, kind of be that sounding board for for the guys, right? Like you're sort of torn there between between the two. But at the end of the day, you just try to kind of be there for the guys, support them, and however they need to be supported. And, and you know, when things are going well, they don't they don't need me. <laughs> um, and even when things go like, there's so much leadership in that room. There's never really been a doubt for me. Uh, there's never never really been a question of. Do I need to talk to this guy? Do I need to do this? Do I need to check in with him? It's just, it's been pretty organic and it's been really nice to be around the team since December. Um, you know, and especially now down the stretch being on the road and, and all of a sudden you just feel like you're more part of the team again. Uh, you're missing out on road trips, you're missing out on quite a, quite a bunch, but uh, proud of the way the guys have, have battled all season long. I mean, come away with 100 and seven points or something um you know and and it's been a great season overall in terms of like regular season you know i think our segments have been pretty if you break it into 10 game segments and been pretty dominant at times you know seven two and ones a bunch of times and then there's a couple of segments around 500 where guys just find ways to kind of get back on track change a couple of things make some adjustments and and, and get back on uh on the winning side of things and you know, I'm never really s surprised by what this group is doing. You know, he's led by obviously Nate and Kale, like you say, but also Miko and Cogs and um, Taser. You know, there's there's plenty of guys in there with obviously winning pedigrees, but but guys that are just always driven to do better. So um, it, it's been fun to see from the sidelines. Yeah, Stephen Ross. You asked about next season. Mm -hmm. Between when's training camp? Mid September and <coughs> start of April. I feel pretty good about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, we can't go and get a guy the caliber of player or the person that that Gabe is. His his injury has been challenging in, in a lot of ways, but not more challenging than what than what he's going through. He loves the game. He's a massive cog in what we're trying to do, and, and he's earned the right to have as much time as it takes to get back on the ice. So um, absolutely, it's a cap challenge. It's, um, it's in, in a lot of ways, and, and we have another one as well. So um, we're not, we can't, it's reality. So. We'll stay in touch with Gabe and, and continue to, to pull for him and, and see where he's at and glean more information. But 
definitely hopeful and and we're going to be 100 percent behind him like you said whether it's september october november whenever that day is um we'll be we'll be super excited to see uh, to see it that's for sure rob and evan um kind of following up on what short asked because i wanted to ask about dan because when brendan spoke about it you know he retired i see the way your kids are watching the game and stuff and i remember dan snuggerdorf talking about one of the most special things is practicing with kids that really have the ability to watch golf is that when you're at the top of consciousness has that been the ultimate thing that you want to make sure that they have that chance to experience that on the ice and get a good picture yeah and i don't i don't know where that comes from like i I remember growing up, my my dad used to play in the Swedish Elite League for a few years, and then he was in the second division. And growing up, when I found that out, I was pissed. I'm like, well, I didn't get to see any of that. You know what I mean? He retired probably 10 years before I was born, but I just always kind of had that in the back of my mind when I started, you know, getting older and started thinking about having kids and whatnot. I wanted to have kids young enough where they could see this part of the stage and my life right in our lives and be a part of it and I'm really glad that I did because it's incredibly special um and uh yeah that's a, that's definitely a big part of it but also you know you're teaching them so many lessons along the way right like even when things are tough and, and things aren't going your way you're still showing up you're still doing the work and there are plenty of days where I don't want to go to the rink where I don't want to go to the gym or whatever but you still do it you show up that's that's half the battle and and you take care of you do what needs to be done right um and they're way too young to learn those lessons now but down the road they might you know we might be able to talk about some of those things and um just overcoming challenges right so uh not to get too too deep on it but yeah it means it means a lot to me and it's very inspiring uh to me Um, you know, I felt really good now for two straight months physically with, with no setbacks, minor or major. Um, so that's a real positive and, and I think it's, I mean, without sharing too much, obviously it's a, it's a, it's a bumpy road and I knew that coming into it, but I didn't realize how hard it was going to be, especially when you do hit those bumps when you do get set back and all of a sudden you're off the ice for a month when you think you're actually going to be ramping it up and I think that's why I answered that question like I did because it's there's no point in me setting a timeline or set even a benchmark for July 1st I want to go game speed or August 1st I want to be able to do a bag skate or whatever it might be right you're just setting yourself up to be disappointed and pissed off when it doesn't happen now obviously within what I'm planning on doing, there are, there is a program and there are steps that need to be met sort of thing. Um, but they're fluid and if things go well, then you fo follow this plan and if they don't, then we'll tweak it and adjust as we go. But, um, yeah. Trial and error. Chris, as you examine this team, I felt like this roster, especially after the trade deadline, the first round was in a position to make a deep run. How do you examine the playoff exit and then this one moving forward? Um, certainly felt we had a, a team capable of, of winning and, and as you guys all know there's a there's quite a few teams that that go into the playoffs feeling they have a they have a chance to win you know we've three straight 50 win seasons you know tremendous talent on, on our team tremendous character um, two tough opponents uh, both 100 plus point teams I think you know, Winnipeg was a uh, was a ch was a challenging first round opponent, and then, you know, Dallas I think had the second most points in the league, and and we're a goal away from from getting it to a game seven. So, ultimately, I, you know, the guys were crushed because you feel you you realistically feel you have a chance, but it's hard, and you need a lot of things uh, to go right. But very very proud of the group. Uh, they battle all year. Uh, they give it their all. They believed every single day that we were going to find a way even when we were when we fell behind so um 
continue to be proud and, and, and know we're going to be back. Eric and Troy. Uh, one thing for me that's starting to really clear is the balance piece for you. Like a leader in this, on this team, how do you take in and, and balance the personal and more importantly like the business side of things for someone like him? I mean, he's what he built it the last couple of years, and I guess for you personally and, and his career, like, like how does it need to kind of unfold for you? And how do you handle the business side of it? You want to start or you want go ahead? Well, the, well, the news came the morning of Game Four, the Monday, and um, you get a phone call and you see the number and and you get a, a a pit in your stomach, right? That was that was a that was a tough one. Um, Val is a is a massive massive piece uh, of our on ice puzzle. Our record with him and without him is is obviously very telling. He's a super hockey player. Um, I think there's there's two sides of the coin, right? There's the there is the human side, and as somebody who's um, over the last 12 months has had two players uh, go into the program, I've had to sort of try to get as educated as possible and. And somebody who was not really familiar with with addiction and the challenges of it, you feel for the person, right? This is a this is a human being. He's a dad. He's a husband, right? And and that's first and foremost. There's not a member of our organization that doesn't want Val to to get to get stuff right in his own life, so that that he can be in a good place. Um, that Monday was very disappointing. Um, we got 25 guys, that 30 guys, whatever it is, over the course of the season. That's a that's a tough blow, and um, I felt for the group. Yeah, and I think, I mean, from my perspective, uh, just like Chris said, you know, Val is a teammate of ours. He's a friend of ours. He's somebody that we've raised the cup with, and and. And had lots of good memories with and, and challenges you've gone through over the years with, right? But so you care for him and you want him to get help and you want him to get right. Now, what happens here moving forward, that's it's up to him how he's going to handle it. And, you know, we obviously we're pulling for him and, and hope everything goes well. Um, you know, so, um, but devastating to, to lose a guy like that going into game four. In a playoff matchup where, you know, you know that the margin for error is so small. And, uh, and I mean, I'm sure in that game four, guys were pretty rattled about it and, and pretty hard to, to just kind of set aside and go and play as much as you want to be mentally strong and just go out there and win with whoever is in the lineup or whoever's out of it. I mean, that's a, it's obviously a big piece. So I, I think guys are rattled the group pretty good and I think they responded really well of game five and and game six as well but felt number one I think the first thing that came to my mind is I just felt bad for the guys in the room the guys have battled so hard and the guys that care so much and this time of year um definitely difficult What what I can say to you is we've 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 got to look at, at at all options. Is that at this time, priority one is for Val to get the help he needs, and and you know, assuming he does, and after the six months, we'll have to read and react on that. But it is very plausible that he will be back with the Avalanche. So Megan and Mark. All good questions, Megan. I think, yeah, I think stage one was un unfortunately last year, and then stage two was was the uh, when he went, when he left the team during the year, and and stage three was was obviously started that day. 
uh, that we got the phone call on, on game four. A as far as the six months clock, I, I would assume it starts that day. And, and the, the rest of that, the reinstatement stuff will, uh, you know, go by what the league doctors and the program dictate. So Mark and then Jesse.